All right, welcome back to DIYDSP.com, the YouTube channel that loves synthesizer knobs. Right here we have the SE02 with 36 different synthesizer knobs plus additional controls. And up here we have the FR777 with even more 40 plus analog controls. So if you watched last week's video, then you know the big question is, how do you get this many knobs into your own synthesizer designs? And if you didn't watch that video, you should definitely watch it because it's super interesting and exciting and explains everything in detail. But for now, what I'm going to say is that your average microcontroller does not have enough analog inputs to do this and you need a multiplexer. That's why I have designed my 64 in one analog knob multiplexer. In my last video, I showed you the bare circuit boards and the knobs that would be used. This video, I'm going to show you the soldered up boards and we're even going to test the thing out. Yes, right here, you're going to see it. So let's get to it. Ta da! This is the completed knob board itself. As you can see, it's got five built in knobs. Now let's take a look at the back. You can see there are three more places, the 6, 7, and 8, where you can attach additional analog inputs or knobs. Now, how does it work? Well, we went over the schematic just a little bit last time, but basically you're talking about clocking this chip right here, which is a big divider, and it's going to use those six pins to control on a multiplexer and a one of eight selector. So when we go to this board, we look at this funny orange wire. This is actually the selector. And the way you select uh, which board this is in, is by running a jumper from JP2 to one of these pins here, which are numbered from one through eight. So these boards are actually daisy chainable. Yes, you can connect eight of these together. And so that would give you a total of 8 times 8 equals 64 analog inputts. Uh, th there'd be 5 knobs per board to give you 40, plus you can put on 3 more here. And if people are interested, I would try to make a, a version of this that has 8 knobs right on the thing. But first of all, let's test this thing. So today we're going to test this by hooking it up to this little Nucleo dev board. This is one of my favorites, the STM32L4. It's an 80 megahertz microcontroller, uh, Cortex M4, low power with a hardware floating point. Very, very good for making uh, digital music instruments. As you can see, I've got a Molex header on here that's going to connect right up to the board, like so. And the Molex connector is nice because there's a, uh, a lot of friction, it's, it's locking. That's important in a music instrument that you're going to carry around. So um, if we look at the six pins here, one of them is completely unused. That's reserved for future expansion. Then there's a power and a ground. And then we have the three most important ones here, the brown, red, and orange. That's the reset, the clock, and the analog in. So I've connected those on my Nucleo. I've connected the clock and the reset up to these two pins here. You could probably just about make out are the D0 and D1 digital outputs. And then the analog goes over to here, which is just the A0, which is just the first of those. And then I've written a simple Arduino sketch that's going to drive those digital outputs, that's going to clock all those chips, and then read the analogs. So let's take a brief look at that analog sketch, and then we're actually going to test the board out. So first things first, we're going to look at the setup. It's a very simple setup. We just do a serial.begin to get us the, the uh, console, the serial console, where we can read the values with the terminal monitor. And then we've got just two pin modes. Notice how we're just setting the clock and the reset signal to outputs. There's no um, direction changing. There's no digital in or anything like this. It's, it's dirt simple. You just clock the outputs. All right. And you can see here, I've used defined statements to set D0 and D1 to be the SIG reset and the signal clock. 
it's very important that you use defines, and not just because I come from a medical software background. It makes your code much more readable. It makes it much more flexible. So let's say you make a more complicated system and you want to add more of these things. It's very easy to change. Now let's take a look at the main loop. Okay, so this is actually a pretty simple Arduino sketch. Basically, each time we want to read all the analog values, we just have to do this section here where we reset the chain by writing a 1 to the SIG reset followed by a 0. I put a 1 millisecond delay in there. We can shorten that delay later on, but let's just verify this thing is working. Next, we're going to read through the chains. I only have one board in my daisy chain so far. Tune in for the next video to see if this works with multiples. And then we're going to read in the analog values. So the way we do that is we just perform the common old analog read on that A0 pin we talked about, print out the value to the screen, and then we do a clocking operation. We write, we write a 1 and then a 0. Then we go up into the loop and we're going to repeat that whole thing five times. So that's all you really have to do. It's pretty simple. Instead of just read, doing analog reads from a whole bunch of knobs, you just read from one location and then do a clock and a clock and a clock. All right, ready to see if this thing actually works? Okay, first thing I'm going to do is start up the serial monitor. Just like this. All right, and the first thing we could see is that we're printing out all zeros. So if we take a look at our knobs board, and you look closely, you can see that all the knobs are indeed turned down to the leftmost position, the most counterclockwise position. Oops. So now let's see what happens when we turn one of these knobs. Ready? I'm going to turn the leftmost knob up a little bit. Aha, and there we see we've reached the value 255 on the first knob. Let's turn it up a little bit more. 600, let's turn it up all the way. 1023. So we're at least reading one knob correctly. Let's look at the second one. Put it halfway. There we go, that's about 448. Turn it up all the way. Okay, we're reading two knobs correctly. Turn up that one almost to the max, all the way to the max. And now let's do both of these at the same time. Look at that. All five knobs are reading their maximum value. And just to make sure that they're not shorted or something like that, let's turn one down. That goes to zero. Let's do it in a funky order. Let's turn off the middle one. That goes to zero. Let's turn off the last one by itself. Let's turn this one off. All right, and now we'll go back to zero. And now I'm going to set up a ramp and so just to summarize what we've seen is that the five knob analog multiplexer board is actually working for one single board and uh, in the next video we're going to daisy chain a couple more of these together i've got to solder them up and I don't know what else to say, except I'm super excited because if we want to get to that uh, 40 knobs, then we just need to put eight of these boards together. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe it and post it for your friends to watch and then watch some of my other YouTube channels. You know, do all that stuff because there's a lot of good information here about designing synthesizers and making music instruments. All right, watch out for part three coming soon.